You're listening to Actors with Issues with Juan Ayala, a podcast of actors, by actors, and for actors. In today's episode, we speak with three of the stars of the freebie comedy series Primo, Jonathan Medina, Johnny Ray Diaz, and Efrain Villa. And, um, you know, of the five um, tios on Primo, uh, who would you say that you each identify with the most? <laughs> Uncle Jay. Uh, definitely Rolly. I mean, for me, yeah, that's that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why I'm here. <laughs> I, I I identify with all of the uncles at different times. I think um, yeah. they they all have very specific profiles, very specific works, and as siblings, they've all had to carve out identities in this very crowded household, right? So all of them have really, really rooted themselves in those identities, and I don't think a single person um, is just one thing, right? We're all different things at different times. So yeah, uh, it depends when you ask, I guess. But yeah, if I want to do the solidarity thing, then yes, I identify with, with Mondo, <laughs> like my co-cast. <laughs> And, you know, with uh, Latino families, especially, you know, we uh, are very involved uh, group of people where we're very loving of our families and all of that. So I'm curious if any of you had those sort of extra parental figures in your lives, whether it was a tío or a tía or a big cousin who felt like another dad or anything like that. Uh, Jonathan, we'll start with you. Hmm. Well, we're starting with me. Um, yeah. My uh, my my uncle on my mom's side was sort of like... Um, he was the combination of all five of these uncles. So um, we were we were on a budget, so we couldn't afford to cast four more uncles. So we just we just had him. Um, <laughs> he was great. He was uh, he was tough and loving and funny and uh, hardworking. Really put me in my place. Was uh, was a huge help to my mom, and was someone that I looked up to. So I was I was really blessed to have him in my life. Yeah, I think the cool part about Primo is that you see that sometimes it's not overt who is influencing your life in very, very profound ways. Sometimes it's a school counselor, sometimes it's a bus driver, and sometimes it's people way behind the scenes and you never get to um, even realize it, much less say thank you, right? And so I think a lot of times that's what life is. It's just these random acts of, of really cool interaction that put people on different paths and we're all kind of constantly reshifting paths um, and you see a lot of that in Primo. And so in, in my personal experience, I think it's 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 complicated. There have been so many different people that I consider family but weren't, um, and so many different friends, so many different, you know, random conversations at a bar that actually shifted a lot of my life that, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not even aware of until much, much later, and I start kind of deconstructing things. I think you see a lot of that in Primo, that um, all of these good intentions, all of this community works in ways that aren't always obvious. And Johnny, what about you? Uh, I was just going to say the same. I mean, just from Latino families, I, my my grandmothers were uh, really pivotal in my life. Uh, my a couple of tios as well, that I, on my mom's side, that we're always imparting wisdom and telling me how to live my life, you know, how it goes. Um, yeah, but I think those, sometimes those, those voices are are necessary. I would, I think I would rather have them than not have them, you know, cause I, I, I think we need that guidance sometimes, especially as a young kid and trying to figure out life. We think we know it all when we're younger. Right. And then we, as we get older, we realize we know nothing. Um, so I think having those, those, uh, patriarchal figures are very important. And, you know, you've each been in this business for a bit. So I'm curious if there's anything you know now about the entertainment industry or about, um, you know, becoming an actor that you wish you knew when you first started. Be yourself. I think that's mm -hmm. the biggest lesson that I've taken over the last 10 years is really finding your own voice. So knowing who you are, knowing what you bring to each of the characters, each <clears> of the <throat> projects that you're attached to. And even in pursuing it in the audition process, really embracing that uh, that singularity that is you, because that's what's going to separate you from everybody else that's going out for the same thing. And it, and and not to take it personally, because it it oftentimes it comes down to variables that are way out of your control. So being able to take ownership and and really buckle down on what you do have control over, not just in the audition process, but in your life, it, it tends to be one of the biggest lessons that I've learned over the last 10 years. 
honoring the the fact that you know it's not a linear process right and that we everything that we're exposed to can contribute to whatever our future selves will be like when i was gallivanting around the planet right backpacking for for a couple of years i had no idea that that would ever inform anything um and so just just you know <laughs> granting yourself a little bit of grace then and and alleviating some of that pressure that you know whatever you're doing right now can be functional it can be put to work and we don't always know how it's not always you know you do this to get that yeah i was gonna say like let go to kind of piggyback they both kind of nailed it but i think i was the the, the word that came the phrase that came to mind was like letting go um meaning like just understand that you can't hold on to things especially like auditions like oh why didn't i get this why didn't i get that it's like you just do it and just forget about it you have to like let things go um and also to touch on what you know Efrain was saying it's like i always like tell actors too that are kind of like getting started is you have to have experiences like create life experiences you know go do things don't just focus i'm just doing acting i'm not doing anything else in my life because that's what acting is it's 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 telling other people's stories and how can you tell the people's stories if you haven't lived any you know so i think it's important to to try different things take unique classes like rock climbing we talked about that earlier jewelry uh, making jewelry <laughs> making you know uh travel the world see different things talk to different people i think all those things are extremely valuable and um i think a lot of people don't do enough of it you know and it, it makes us uh more well-rounded you know yeah it's definitely been a, a sort of recurring theme on our show uh lots of actors have, have said similar things you know the the best way to be an actress is to just go experience life and and learn and, and all of that you know if all you do is eat sleep and breathe acting like you're good you can do a show like barry and play an actor sure. but, <laughs> so but i have I think other I, broadened experiences you know <laughs> yeah. that, that advice is probably true not just for acting right that's just true of anything in life everything, yeah. like the more the more experiences you have i mean that that is essentially what wisdom is right is being able to piece disparate pieces of information together to make something greater than the soul of its whole and you know, you have to have different pieces for that. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious also, you know, um, I grew up watching shows like, you know, the George Lopez show and Diana, which your co-star Christina, you know, started in. Uh, and all of those shows made me feel very represented growing up and seeing these, you know, hilarious Latin families on TV. So I'm curious for each of you, who was uh, a, a, an actor or uh, if there was a particular show or movie that made you feel represented when you were growing up? I actually um, watched The Simpsons in Spanish. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You want to go, Johnny? Yeah. I, I watched The Simpsons for my early part of life in Spanish. Um, okay. And I am pretty sure to this day that The Simpsons are Mexican. Um, <laughs> and, and so they they are the Mexican family that influenced me. <laughs> That's hilarious. I actually love that. I actually love the Simpsons series. I grew, grew up watching that show. But I was going to say for me, uh, it was actually uh, John Logazamo. Um I'm a big fan of his, uh, and I remember he he felt like the only Latino actor in Hollywood that was like making movies at the time when I was younger. And he's also Colombian, and I'm half Colombian, so I was like, "Oh, cool! Like, there's this guy like on you know movies that's like doing it." You know what I mean? Um, so for me, that was the that's the sort of the first person or the per the one that I saw that I was like, "Oh, like you can this guy's making it somehow." Like, so maybe it's possible. You know, which also in a way is kind of sad that there's there wasn't a lot more, you know, like a lot of yeah. other places that we can kind of look up to necessarily. Um, but yeah, you know, for me that was that was definitely him. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, I <laughs> so the, the 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 yeah, here we go. The we go. Uh, if I tell you the name of the show, it's gonna date me. Um I Chico, and the, Chico and the man was the was the first time I yeah see <laughs> that was the first time I felt represented on screen and then and then it was uh, Raul and Julia I mean really watching yeah. him in uh, in almost anything um, but uh, everything from Adam's Family to Kiss of the Spider Woman watching his work mm -hmm. uh, he was he's always been always 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 been an inspiration to me he's the first Latino I saw do shakespeare before that i thought that that wasn't something we could do and then you see him with on stage with meryl streep a young meryl streep and it's mind-blowing but gentlemen thank you so so much for for taking the time to chat with us today and and congrats on such a great show i can't wait for folks to see it thank, thank you man. thank you so much yeah take care 
Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to Actors with Issues on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, and visit our YouTube channel for full video interviews. Actors with Issues is executive produced and hosted by Juaniala. See you next time.